Hi, hello again from TTF. My name is Teddy Poo and I want to show you some demonstration models I've made uh, to demonstrate different forces. Um, the first thing I want to show you is this. This is what I call my centrifuge. It's made out of a piece of a hoover, part from a hoover, a wax hoover. This is an adapter from a drain pipe, an old ornament stand and inside is a motor from an electric drill. So I've made this in order to spin that. So I'll be putting that in there and I'm turning it on to spin that. What I'm trying to show here is something called centrifugal force. And centrifugal force is the force that's exerted on something that's spun around. If it spins around, the ball is having centrifugal force exerted on it. The reason why it doesn't fly off in any direction is because the string is holding it in and stopping it from flying off. That force is called centripetal force. So whenever you have a centrifugal force pulling outwards, you've got a centripetal force pulling in the opposite direction inwards. And centrifugal force is used in many things in science and engineering and I'm going to demonstrate uh, its effects on, uh, on objects. So I'm going to put my new fangle motor onto the centrifuge and I'm going to spin it slowly. And what I'm going to show is this is a very light ball. So there's not a lot of weight in that. If I drop that off, can you see it? gradually getting thrown out to the edge. And if I use a little heavier ball, this ball is solid plastic. If I put that in the middle, whoop, can you see that spun out a little quicker? If I use these marbles, they're a bit heavier. See how quickly they fly out to the edge? They fly out to the edge really quickly. Now these little ball bearings slightly lighter. The centrifugal force is throwing them out. As soon as they start to spin around, they end up being thrown out first until they hit the edge, where the edge is using centrifugal force to hold them in. Now this ball is really, really heavy. Watch how quickly this one flies out to the edge. So that's centrifugal force. Now well then, I'd like to demonstrate something else for you now, using centrifugal force. I don't know whether anyone's ever seen one of these before. This is a little pump, and this is called a centrifugal pump. If I spin it, you can feel the air blowing against my face. The inside of there has got little veins in it, and as you spin that, it spins around, draws the air in the middle, blows the air out for there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect that to this rod. And I'm going to demonstrate how centrifugal force can run this as a pump. So I'm going to connect a little bit of plumbing in there. Fill this full of water. I'm going to use centrifugal force for my little motor to fill the glass full of water, hopefully. So we're ready to go. One, two, three. Right. Right, try again. Oop, better 
to stop there. So that's the same principle, centrifugal force. I'm going to be using this little pump to pump the water out from here into the glass using my motor. So that's centrifugal force fit. Now, if you don't know what hydraulics is, these are two syringes, one little one, one big one. Now, if I press the big one, for a little distance, the big one travels, the little one travels much, much faster and further, doesn't it? And if I do it the other way around, if I press the little one, see how slowly the big one moves? The thing is, the liquid inside there is just coloured water. But the liquid inside it is the same pressure. That means that if you've got a small area like that, as you're pushing down on that, if it's acting on a much bigger area, it means the force coming out this side is much higher than the force on this side. It slows it down, it doesn't travel as far, but it gives you much greater force. That's the principle of hydraulics. And that's why I want to show you how the brakes, your front disc brakes work. On the, on the car. This is a hydraulic system. This time we've got a little one little piston connected to two cylinders. On the car that's called a master cylinder, these are called slaves. And when I press that, can you see the cylinder? The plunger is moving up, the syringe is moving up. Well one's moving, the other was a bit stubborn. Alright, can you see that? That's underneath the pedal of the brake in the car. These are against the wheel and they brake against the wheel like that to slow it down. What I'm going to do is to build a model of the braking system to demonstrate it. And I'm going to use the front from an old kitchen draw, a bicycle wheel, these little bits of metal and wood and plastic that you can see there and two rubbers. And by the magic of video, I click my fingers and you will see them instantly painted. Watch this. One, two, three. Okay, now it's all painted. Let's see what it looks like assembled. Take a look at this. There you go, and this is it, painted and fully assembled. You can, now if you watch this video, you can go and tell your parents, you know exactly how the front disc brakes work in your car. The wheel spins, behind the wheel there's a disc, and if you look inside the wheels of most cars nowadays, you can see the discs on the inside, the disc on the inside, and these two pistons on each side. They set in what's called a caliper, and when you press the foot pedal, it sets the brake to go on the disc, not on the wheel itself, like we got here, but it's on the disc. So there's a demonstration. Let's spin it as fast as we can. Hit the brake, and it stops. Okay, thank you very much for watching.